Hello, Shay. You're welcome to your poultry production course. This course is titled How to Operate Your Poultry Farm with Guaranteed Results. I am sorry I couldn't send this through uh, the Zoom recording because of very poor uh, connection. And so I have to do this this way, uh, combining my telephone and the laptop. Um, the learning objectives that um, I have for this course are that at the end of it, you should be able to set goals for your poultry farm, uh, be able to uh, measure the performance of your poultry farm, be able to manage the operations of your poultry farm, and be able to make decisions on what is best for your overall goal. The course is set in uh, five modules that you can see. The module one, we discuss about goal setting. Under module two, we discuss poultry value chain and getting to know the chicken briefly. And then module three, which is really the, the core of this course, uh, we're going to discuss in detail poultry farm operations. And in module four, we will uh, discuss the risk that are therein in poultry production and how to mitigate those risks. And in the fifth module, uh, will be on a poultry farm. So let's get started by defining uh, poultry. What is poultry? Poultry are domesticated birds that produce meat and eggs for human consumption. Um, there are different types of poultry, such as chicken, turkey, guinea fowl, duck, geese, and goose, quail birds, pheasants, peacocks. These are all poultry. Uh, they all belong to the poultry class of birds because they are reared for meat and eggs for human consumption. Um, um, is there any need for poultry production? Of course, there's a very high need for poultry production, the population growth uh, is responsible for the high demand for poultry products. Uh, the population of Nigeria is slightly uh, over uh, 200 million uh, people, and it's estimated that uh, the population of Nigeria will be uh, about 400 million by, 19, by 2050. And uh, 2050 is just about uh, 19 years. How many years away? About 29 years away, okay? Now there's a need for poultry production because of need for food security. We have to be able to feed our growing population. And the livelihoods of many people are sustained through uh, uh, poultry production. Many people are working in poultry farms. Many people are selling chicken. Many people are uh, selling chicken products and all that. And then uh, poultry is also important in the economy uh, because of the drive towards uh, the diversification of the economy. So there are so many reasons why uh, there is such a need for poultry production today. Okay, so, uh, so the first module for this course is actually goal setting. And um, what we're going to be looking at uh, under this is that uh, is for you to set your purpose. What is your purpose? You should define your purpose in, uh, and see how that uh, aligns with your desire to have a poultry farm. And then you're also going to describe your vision. What is your vision for this uh, project? in the next six months, in the next one year, um, in the next three years, in the next five years? How do you see yourself and your poultry uh, enterprise uh, in terms of time? What is the mission of your farm? What difference would uh, your poultry farm make in the society? What need are you trying 
to accomplish or to meet by setting up the poultry farm? How would this farm impact the community? So that's what your mission should be like, and I think you should be able to define what those missions are. These things that we are I'm talking about are the real things that make businesses and organizations to thrive. Without a mission, without a vision, the Bible says without a vision, uh, people cast off restraint. But vision and mission, you can go far. So please take time to uh, write out the vision, the purpose, and the mission of your poultry farm. What are your goals? Goals are the things that you want to achieve in time. And goals should be specific, should be measurable, should be attainable, should be realistic, and should be time-bound. So um, write down four goals that you want to achieve uh, in the next, can you say, in the next six months or in the next one year, as the case may be. So do that. And I think I, I look forward to uh, seeing your, your goals. And like I said, the SCON module basically is very short. It's just an overview of the poultry industry. The, the poultry industry value chain includes the upstream. The, the upstream, I hope you can see this well, the upstream se sector made of uh, researchers. Uh, you don't have researchers here, but they are there. The researchers, breeders, uh, the archeries. Um, these are the ones that produce the raw materials for the producers uh, who are in the midstream. And uh, at the midstream, you have the producers, uh, broiler producers, egg producers, and the processors, people that produce chicken into uh, meat, uh, into other uh, poultry products. Then you have in the downstream, you have the distributors, uh, the retailers, uh, and the consumers, and then the input suppliers, where you have the veterinarians, you have the feed millers, uh, and uh, feed distributors, the agro, uh, agro vet dealers, you have uh, the drug and vaccine manufacturers and, and distributors, and um, you have equipment suppliers also as input suppliers so the input suppliers and services the the service the upstream the midstream and the downstream and really yeah these uh, sectors are not exclusive it's possible for you to be uh, an upstream player a midstream player a downstream player and uh, also be an input supplier. So it's possible to set up an organization that works like that, that integrates all the various sectors of the poultry industry into one uh, operation. Okay, so next we just uh, take a look at uh, the chicken under four subheads, uh, the characteristics of the chicken. We look at the body parts of the chicken, we look at the internal organs of the chicken, and then the self-handling of uh, chicken. Characteristics of chicken. There are different types and sizes of chicken. Now, and, uh, we have local and uh, commercial or hybrid chicken, and then uh, the, the differentiating factors between these uh, two types of chicken is their performance. Uh, while uh, local female chicken uh, lay 25 to 100 eggs uh, yearly, uh, the, the commercial can lay up to 300 yearly. Uh, you know, all this depends on their nutrition, uh, weather prediction, environmental conditions, and the health. Chicks hatch uh, after 21 days either naturally or artificially. In commercial uh, production, um, the chicks are hatched artificially 
uh, in the arteries. They incubate them for 21 days. After that, the chicks just pop out. And then, uh, now local female chickens can start to lay from about six to eight months of age, whereas the commercial uh, female chicken can start to lay from four to six months of age. And um, most chickens mature at about six months of age. Uh, mature male chicks, chickens are called cocks or, or roasters. Or, and um, uh, you, male cocks crow throughout the day, not only in the morning. You know, in some cultures, if a cock should crow in the daytime, uh, especially in the afternoon, uh, <laughs> that cock is gone. It's, 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 it's a taboo, but it's, it's a natural habit for cocks to crow. So they crow throughout the day. Now, mid-type chickens can weigh up to two kilograms in six to eight weeks. That's commercial meat-type chickens can grow, you know, to two kilograms in six to eight weeks. Actually, they can grow up to three kilograms, six to eight weeks. Uh, if they are well fed, the weather is, uh, is good, there's, there's, there's no threat uh, by rats and, and pests and the environment, the conditions are favorable and then they are in good health. Okay, so you have uh, the chicken part there. Now I, I put in this uh, in this course uh, to help uh, you to 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 describe the kind of conditions that you find in your chicken. You know, um, especially when they become sick, so that um, the vet or the yes the animal health uh, service provider would know um, how to respond to it. Okay, so based on, on uh, the physical appearance, maybe in the time of illness, the, the vet will be able to know what to expect when they go inside the, the body of the chicken. Uh, so that's the internal organs of the chicken there. Uh, starting from the head, you have the eyes. The eyes of the chicken should be bright and alert, you know, and um, you have the the larynx is the larynx that's a, the larynx is the vocal cord uh, you have the edge of fagos where the food passes through the trachea the windpipe and then uh, and, and, and all the internal organs of the chicken and all these all these organs are supposed to to be in in in, in good condition in optimal condition for for the chicken to perform well now when chickens become sick uh, some of these organs will show specific signs. And so when we say we are doing a post-mortem of the chicken, what we are looking at, we are looking at all the organs to see what are the signs that uh, the lesions that, that the disease has produced, which organ of the, of the chicken uh, is affected by, 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 by the disease. And then that would inform the kind of treatment or management that would be put in place to arrest the situation. Okay, so quickly, um, let's uh, talk about self-handling of chicken. Uh, we have day old, sick chicken, we, uh, and then adult chicken that we take to the market, and of, of course, other events like the vaccination and treatment. And so um, um, they must be handled differently and in specific manners to ensure their safety. So their old chicks should be transported to the farm as soon as possible. You should avoid stressful conditions such as overcrowding when moving them or subjecting them to extreme temperatures and cold. Uh, you should ensure adequate access to feed and water uh, as soon as they arrive on the farm. Um, because um, there's uh, a general tendency of chicken for them not to eat, they are not so very strong. So um, the, the food should be placed where they can easily, you know, have access to it. And then when you are handling them in a multi-age production farm, where you have a day old chicks and then you already have older chicks, uh, when feeding, you should start to feed the, 
the younger chicken first before you feed the, the older ones. And then um, if you have sick chicken, uh, you should separate them into a separate room and provide food and water for them. You should not um, allow the sick chicken to mix with healthy ones because of the risk of uh, uh, continuous uh, uh, distribution or dissemination of uh, disease uh, agents to other birds. So you have to monitor your, your, your birds every day uh, uh, to, 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 to make sure that they are in good condition. And if you see anyone that shows any sign of disease, you should separate them. You should ensure adequate provision for light and ventilation, even in the room that you have the sick beds. And um, you should avoid stressful conditions, just like in other cases. You should um, enter the sick pen last. You, you should fit the healthy beds first before you go to the sick pen. Okay, um, if you take your chicken to the market, you should transport them in, in crates to the market. You should avoid mixing with other chicken from other farms and in the market. And then if you have to bring chicken back home from the market, you should quarantine them for at least seven days before you introduce them to, to the rest of the flock. And during vaccination and treatment, you should avoid stampede. Uh, the, the chicken should be handled gently. Uh, you, you shouldn't drive them uh, to avoid stress because uh, the vaccination of stress birds can, can result in a breakdown. Uh, it can, the vaccine could overwhelm them and then you have a disease outbreak. So we, we try as much as possible to, to, to keep them in a conducive environment should prevent them from wing flapping, flapping their wings during the handling by holding the chicken uh, close to your body with the wings folded, you know, in a natural way. Full instructions and guidelines of vaccine and drug manufacturers during the vaccination exercise. So, thank you so much. This is what we have to cover for today. Uh, in the next session, we're going to be looking at the poultry farm operations, um, looking at planning and managing your operations, We're looking at management and organization of staff and employees, marketing and communication, financial management, and then of course we look at chicken production, we look at the template of uh, operating a, a poultry farm. So thank you so much. Please uh, go over the slides again and um, ask any questions that you may have and please I'm looking forward to having your 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 goals set thank you